Hi, this video is about the virtual canvas project here in GitHub. If you know WPF, you probably know about virtualization of lists and grids to help make really long lists scale better. But have you ever wanted to virtualize a freeform 2D canvas that contains any shape? Well, now you can with this sample code. Let me show you how it works. If you load the Visual Studio solution in the source folder, you'll see a main window, and this main window creates 100,000 different shapes with different random positions and sizes, different random colors, and different shapes from a enum. This enum is just for demo purposes that describes four different shapes that we want to put on this canvas. When we run this, the window loads up really quickly. And you can scroll around. Notice how the scroll bar thumbs are really small. I can drag that scroll bar and get really good smooth performance across this enormous canvas of 100,000 different shapes. Why was it so quick? The whole purpose of the virtual canvas is to delay the creation of any of these visuals until they're absolutely needed. For example, the bounds of the object that's on the screen here intersects with the current scroll view or viewport. So as I'm panning this view here and this shape here goes off screen, the visual goes away. The WPF visual is completely removed. As it comes back on screen, it's automatically created on the fly there. You can also select a shape with the left mouse button and then drag that shape. And what this is doing is moving that shape around the virtual canvas. Uh, so you can obviously do that smoothly and easily as well. How does this work? Under the covers, all of the bounds information of every shape here is added to a quad tree index, which is a sort of rectangular hierarchical breakdown of the entire 100,000 by 100,000 canvas into regions. And if you scroll out, you can stress the system and start to see the performance of WPF kick in where it takes longer to create those shapes. So notice now we're seeing the delay in WPF actually creating shapes and it's filling things in based on the re rectangular regions of the quad tree index. So you're actually seeing the quad tree index now as WPF is slowly filling in these shapes. You can now see what I mean by if the app tried to create all 100,000 shapes up front before during loading of the window, the entire UI of the application would have frozen for a very long time, uh, which is obviously an unacceptable experience for the user. Now, you can also pan the view here, and you'll see that the quad tree is able to know what needs to be filled in, and that's also filled in asynchronously. So one other thing the virtual canvas is doing here is it's making the filling in of these shapes asynchronous. So it's not blocking the UI ever. It's throttling the creation of those shapes based on how long it takes to create those shapes so that the user, no matter what, is always getting a good experience here. Obviously, the worst case when I'm zoomed out is a full page up, if I click in the uh, scroll bar track, it has to completely recreate every shape. Let's make it harder. Scroll out, page down. All right, that's pretty quick. That's slower. Right? That's the worst case. Um, so obviously, you know, you can decide how far out you want to allow your user to zoom. Some systems won't let the user go past 100%, for example. Or maybe you want to go to allow them to go to 50%, but you can decide where you want to stop in that user experience. All right, let's take a look at the code. The first step is these demo shapes. What we've defined is a class that is kind of like a view model. It is a model behind the view that implements a special interface called iSpatialIndex, which is used by the quad tree to create that spatial index. So what, what does it have to implement? It has to implement a bound. So you have to know the location and size of each shape that you want to put on your canvas up front before WPF has measured those things. That's the trade-off here. You have to know some bounds. Now you can change those bounds later. You have to have some estimate of those bounds. It could be, for example, that you saved them to a file in some you know, design document for your canvas. And when you reloaded it, it just reloaded those bounds. However, you get those bounds, uh, you provide it to the spatial index. You can also define a priority so different um, objects can be prioritized over others and, and those visuals will be created first. You can also define a z-index so you can put certain shapes on top of other shapes. You can turn, you know, make things invisible and bring them back on screen again, which is handy. And then at some point, 
This will be called when the visual has been measured by WPF, and you can use this then to update the visual bounds. If the WPF measures things slightly differently, maybe you've moved to a different computer that has a different uh, default user DPI setting or something, and uh, the shape needs to be a different size, you can then fix the bounds that you that you had. And you can have a, an optional additional data object here. You know, sometimes that's handy for binding this to some other data model. All right, so for my, for my demo shapes then, I'm going to implement that interface. So I've got bounds, I've got a priority, and I'm also implementing a notify property changed event here. So I can be notified when I change the bounds of an object. I'm actually doing nothing on measure and uh, I'm adding a concept of selection and I've got some other properties here that, that are handy, just things like for the demo, uh, you know, I'm gonna be able to change the actual shape type. These are all just random number generation then and I create 100,000 of them and as you saw, um, it's very quick at creating these model objects. Indexing them is also very quick. Notice it's putting them into this demo spatial index, which is an implementation of a priority quad tree on spatial item, which implements I spatial index. Demo spatial index is, could be something that, that's handy for you if you want to uh, create your own. Let's take a look at one more thing. So all this comes together with this diagram class. So the diagram class is also of our demo design here. The main point of the diagram class is to wrap our virtual canvas and, and make it usable. The virtual canvas is low level. It is um, just the virtual quad tree index based virtualization of items. So to make it a, into a demo that you can pan and scroll and, and do all that fun stuff, we've wrapped it in our own diagram class. But you could create your official you know, diagram control that wraps the virtual canvas and adds scrolling and all the other fun stuff. So most of the logic here is related to scrolling and ch setting the viewpoint, the viewport on the canvas. But there's one important piece, which is the visual factory. So you need to create a factory that implements iVisual Factory. And this guy, his whole job in life is to create the WPF visuals when it's being told to do that. If I run this in the debugger, we'll see exactly what's going on here. And after it comes up, I'm going to put a breakpoint on realize. And then I'm going to do a page down and realize should get called, right? So you can see now that the virtual canvas is deciding that there's new things. I told you that the virtualization was throttled, so you can see the throttling. And then it's finally deciding to virtualize, uh, realize the visual for this item. This item is an ellipse at this bounds with this fill color. And then the job of this function is to return a WPF visual. We have our own implementation of a WPF visual but you could return any WPF object here. The only point of the factory is it has to know which kind of object to create based on your data item. If you look at the demo visual that we've created, we've created a lightweight framework element. We're not using any controls here. We just wanted this to be the lightest weight kind of visual that has its own on render call. So the render call will happen, WPF, and we'll just render different shapes rect, round rect, whatever. So we make this low level just for the purpose of the demo, but again, it could be any WPF visual returned on the virtual canvas. In fact, well, let's try it. We'll add a button shape. So we go to the factory and we'll go here. If d.shape type equals button, then Return a new button with a content of click me, a fill color, right? <laughs> you get the idea. And a bounds, right? So width of and a height. And this has to be thickness object else that right and let's see what happens I think the next five All right, we now have a bunch of WPF buttons on the screen and everything is just 
as hunky dory as before. This is a rectangle. My drag drop's probably not going to work because the button took my mouse clicks. Right? But they're all laid out correctly, they're in the right positions, right sizes, so any WPF object will work. There's one more feature I want to talk about, which is eye semantic zoomable. You can put this on your shapes, and you can be called when the zoom is changed to a new level, and you can decide to show and hide detail on your objects, and we call this semantic zooming, so that as you change the zoom level, you can show and hide certain WPF details, and you can get more scalability that way also. So maybe you can hide some things that are so small that the user couldn't read them and uh, get back a lot of performance from WPF by not trying to create really, really tiny text labels and things like that. So that's it for this demo. I hope you find the virtual canvas to be something useful for helping you to make WPF work better in your project.